Hello and thank you for viewing this demonstration video of VMware's vCenter Infrastructure Navigator. My name is Ben Shearer and I am a member of the vCenter Operations Management product team and this demo will go a bit in depth into the vCenter Infrastructure Navigator product or VIN for short, V-I-N and uh, we'll explore some of the use cases and functionality of the product. Just to give you a little background, uh, this is a feature of the vCenter Operations Management Suite available in the Enterprise and Enterprise Plus editions. This feature is an appliance that will integrate into the vSphere web client itself, providing functionality and integrated functionality across the vSphere web client as well as across Site Recovery Manager or SRM. So without further ado, let's just dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and log in to the web client. Again, this will give me access to VIN itself as an integrated component. Actually, I'm going to clean up the interface here a little bit just by shrinking that down. And I'm going to go right into the summary tab as I go in. So you see it's just the standard web interface. Two VCs right now we're monitoring. I'm going to tap into this VC and you notice right here on the right hand side that there is a new portlet called Navigator. And this actually shows me now what applications are discovered within the vSphere environment. So of course the premise of VIN is its ability to drop in as an application look at or be able to discover applications that are uh, virtualized within this uh, virtual center. Not only discover those applications, but we can actually uh, cross-reference them to the knowledge base that is part of VIN and tell you what application it service and cross-link it to and provide you what that application actually is. So for example, uh, in the category of application servers, I know I understand that I have you know so many Apache Tomcats, SharePoint, WebLogic, etc. Same goes with uh, maybe virtualization management applications or v, v apps or or appliances, messaging server, web servers, database servers, etc. What VIN also does then is understands the dependencies and maps those dependencies. It gives you a good picture, for example, if a VM is running poorly or is even down, what implication that has or impact that has uh, across your application environment. Uh, and this is really a strong use case because also if you're looking to uh, right size or optimize your virtual infrastructure, say for example, get rid of zombie VMs, how can you really be sure that that perhaps idle or zombie VM isn't a uh, critical piece of an, uh, another application. And this allows you to actually have that extra sense of visibility or level of visibility into your environment. Next, I'm going to click on the Navigator tab up here. As you can see, now you can see all the applications by name. So these are the names of the applications and the supporting services. I'm going to actually clean this up a little bit and I'm going to uh, size to fit. This way we can get a little better view of what we want to see and I'm actually going to hide some of these columns that aren't necessary for this demo but uh, allows you to see now a cleaner picture. Now the few, few things I wanted to show you in this is I can actually filter out different applications like for example IIS. I want to see all my IIS uh, deployments and this is good because now I can look and see, okay, hey, I actually have an inventory, an asset inventory of what's going out on out in my environment. This asset inventory can be anything by, you know, detecting uh, version numbers to even looking at um, if it's protected or not. I mentioned earlier that it has integration into SRM, Site Recovery Manager. Uh, we even indicate with SRM if there's a protection group that it's part of and an overall recovery plan. So this is pretty powerful because now you can be sure that you have all components or all levels of your application actually protected. Go ahead and clear that out. Let's look at, what, for example, SharePoint. So I want to see maybe all my SharePoint servers. Again, I can see what the services that support that. I can look at, um, again, versioning 
of that particular. So if I want to see, you know, all my versions less than 7.5 or, or even indicate, you know, here are, here are some uh, servers that need to be updated to the more current version. Easy way to do it. All right, so I'm going to actually dive in um, to one of these servers, and you see that I can just click right on there. On the left-hand side, you should see that I'm clicked down into the SharePoint VM. You notice now there's a navigator tab here that shows you particulars about that VM, and also a button called Show Dependencies, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So this actually pulls up the dependency map which is now shows you visually the, of course, the VM that I initially uh, selected, and the incoming and outgoing dependencies, and also, as you see, and I'm going to drill in here, actually I'm going to show you a couple different things. One, I can show you the ability to actually, if it's a large map or a, a very large environment, I can actually uh, magnify it and take a quick look at it. So uh, a few things that I'll make note of pointing out is, of course, this is the VM that I had selected and the services and everything d defined. Now you notice in this particular VM, there's an extra box in here, extra group that shows actually the protection group and the plan. Uh, associated with SRM. This particular VM does not have that and there's a reason why because it is actually not part of a protection group. And we can actually get a better view of that through the table view. So you see that there's dependencies across these three VMs as part of the three-tiered app for example and it shows you what the protection groups are. So what we want to do next is probably go into SRM and actually configure this to be part of the protection group. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and go right into Site Recovery Manager. And you look at my protection groups, Navi, Demo, SharePoint, and you actually see that my Node 1 VM is not configured. So I'm actually going to right click on that and configure that for protection. It's going to walk me through the wizard, which is pretty straightforward uh, for this particular protection group and it's going to go ahead and add it to the plan. So you also see within SRM that all the VMs that are part of the protection group are also using VIN uh, data to identify those VMs with the actual application that runs on it. So Oracle, for example, WebLogic, uh, Web Server, Apache, etc. I'm actually show you one other thing too. Uh, when we look at this SharePoint protection group in here, and I look at the virtual machines, I might even see some critical of the uh, three-tiered application that I might want to actually uh, prioritize. So, for example, I might want to uh, prioritize Exchange Node One to be the first. VM to, to boot back up or to, to start after a site is recovered. Uh, so that might be good to know, for example, if there's a, a database server or, or a web server, that type of thing, you might want to set priorities based on how you want it to recover. So being able to obviously identify what those names are of those applications or identify what the applications are in our S SRM is, is very valuable and, and VIN actually brings you that capability. So I'm going to jump back into the web client and I'm actually going to go back to the map view and I'm going to click out and click back in to refresh the map. So you noticed when I did that, here is my VM, the node 1. And notice now that is actually added back into the group and the plan. All right, a few other things I want to show you in this demo is I'm actually going to go over to this Exchange cluster, this Exchange V app. I'm going to drill down into 
one of the nodes and you see it's a bit more complex vapp a lot more incoming and outgoing uh, relationships and i'm actually going to go to uh, let's go to this vm right here and you see that there's uh, a number of things to, to take mention of uh, one is you see at the bottom there's three unknown services and there's an arrow coming in that says plus three okay so i'm going to go ahead and we're going to increase this pull it in so the plus three means that there's three dependencies that are coming in from other v apps or from other tiered applications to this particular ldap server all right so this means that there's additional implications for example if this was to be taken offline or shut down or, or performance problems on this server and the this would be true if there were a number associated with this box here it would show that are there any outgoing dependencies from this server to other vms within this vcenter so you actually see this this link here to what refers to unknown services so actually there's three unknown services which could represent custom applications or undefined applications applications we do not have defined within the vin knowledge base all right so what i'm going to i'm going to do two things one is i'm going to expand those dependencies so these are like secondary dependencies right so they aren't part of the particular v app itself but they have certain dependencies to the virtual machine that we're looking at so you can see what those dependencies are in the green lines so that actually expands out again to your capabilities to to really understand what the overall implication or, or impact in your environment is uh, also what i want to do at this point is i'm going to click on the unknown services there's three of them and i'm going to expand this box up down here to see what they are so you see there's listening ports um, and uh, processes so let's take this one for example system and I'm gonna go ahead and just expand that and say well this process system running on port 139 uh, this might be just a custom web app now I've defined this and I'm actually gonna call it an application server once I define it it is good to go for the rest of your environments that are being or within that this vCenter so you can see that it will actually add the web app to this particular VM that's running on that VM all right one last thing I want to show you is we see the gray box the gray box indicates that this is an external service. Uh, when I mean external, it's one hop away from this vCenter. And the one hop away could be a physical server or could be a server on another vCenter. So this is good as I click on here, I can actually get information on this. Um, and the information resides in an IP address. And again, I can custom identify this through saying perhaps like the, the exchange physical server or something to indicate uh, what this service is one hop away again from the vCenter environment that I am monitoring. So that's a quick look at vCenter Infrastructure Navigator or VIN. Uh, for more information, please go to the vmware.com website and look in the products section. Uh, this is, again, remember a, a feature component of the vCenter operations suite. And it is part of the either enterprise or enterprise plus editions. And again, my name is Ben Shear, and I thank you again for viewing this video.